Good afternoon, President Stanley, Provost Woodruff, and the Board of Trustees. Thank you for inviting me back home. To the administration, faculty, and staff, thank you for all you do. To the proud families and friends who traveled here to celebrate your loved ones, this is your day also. And to each and every one of you in the resilient, inspiring class of 2022, I am so proud to be your fellow Michigan State alum. Congratulations. I am deeply honored that you have let me be a part of your special day, and I am so grateful for this honorary degree. We all came to Michigan State for different reasons. I came for two, Magic Johnson and my mom, Claire Bell Smith. I'm still a mama's boy. I wanted to be on this campus because I wanted to stay close to family. By the time I graduated, the people I met here had become family. To this day, they still are. They're my closest friends. They were my groomsmen. They were the people who call me when things are going well and who show up when things get a little rough. Above all else, graduates, I hope that for many years from now, you still feel as close to one another as you do today. Even through the long, lonely months that kept so many of us apart, you went through this once-in-a-lifetime chap chapter together. And these Spartans will always be there for you. Now, maybe you didn't choose Michigan State because of magic or because of your mom, but in coming here, you chose to surround yourself with good and giving people, your roommates and friends, your classmates and teammates, your professors and TAs. You've chosen to surround yourself with smart and supportive Spartans. Spartans who stand up for what's right and who speak out against what's wrong. Spartans who are courageous and effective and who deserve credit for pushing the school to be more, more multicultural and more inclusive. And to take nice words about diversity in a strategic plan and, and make sure they are made real. As you walk together this weekend, in the same way that you stuck by each other through an extraordinary and exhausting experience, you are fulfilling my favorite proverb, 1320. They who walk with the wise will become wise, but a companion of fools will suffer harm. In choosing to come to this campus, you chose to walk with the wise. When you cross the stage and take hold of your diplomas, you'll be doing it one more time. And when you stay in each other's lives in the years ahead, you'll grow even wiser thanks to one another. But once you go out into the wider world, how can you make sure you're still surrounding yourself with good, giving, grounded people? How do you even figure out who is wise and who to walk, and who to walk with? Here's one thing I know for sure. You can't tell that by someone's age, race, or gender. You can't tell it by their degrees, their title, or the car that they drive. You certainly can't tell it by the number of followers they have. Although sometimes it feels easier to walk with people who look and think like you, that's not the only way. The equity and inclusion we value has many dimensions. Race, nationality, gender, wealth, education. At its heart, it's about giving everyone an opportunity. Everyone. So as you leave Michigan State and go on to great things, I hope you'll find a way to give an opportunity to someone who doesn't look like you. Another thing I've come to realize about the people I want to be around and the person I want to be is something I learned from my coaches, including Johnny Ghoston, Judd Heathcote, and Tom Mizzo. Thanks, Iz. <laughs> who made me his recruit some 35 years ago. Whew. It's something that I found myself learning all over again from the kids I've coached covered and cheered for, including my sons. And that is what I want to talk to you about today. President Stanley was kind enough to recall that when I graduated, I held Michigan State's all-time scoring record. I can remember the intensity growing as I got closer and closer to that number. A teammate told me how many points I needed to average my senior year. Reporters noticed when I was 200 points and then 100. And then I was in striking distance. Then the big moment came. Usually this will be the part of the story where I tell you 
about the feeling of breaking the record. How I felt to weave down the lane, lose my defender with a half spin move, the Smitty, and see the ball switch through the net. But here's the honest truth. I don't actually remember the shot that broke the record. To this day, I don't know if it was a free throw, a floater, or a three from deep. I don't know if it happened in the first half or the second half. I truly don't remember. And maybe that sounds surprising, but here's what I do remember. My mind immediately flashed back to playing in my backyard on Detroit's east side. My dad, Donald Smith, had poured concrete behind our house and put up a hoop. On that little court, I learned to dunk by jumping off milk crates, and I learned how to pivot and dribble around cracks in the concrete. That's where my mind went at the end. It went to the beginning, to my sixth grade championship at Corville Elementary School, to the pickups games all over the city, to the scrimmages at Hawthorne Recreation Center, to the tournaments and games planned for Persian High School, and to the thousands upon thousands of shots I practiced. All those baskets were part of this record, even if they weren't recorded anywhere but in my heart. People like to celebrate the shots you make in the last game of a season, or the closing seconds of a game, or in the final moment as you mark a milestone. But what I, what, but what I remember more than those last shots are the ones I took at the start. The reason I think is this. There's a difference between achievement and fulfillment. People like to collect accolades and polished trophies. And yes, gold medals might be valuable, but that's not what makes them meaningful. The work is what makes the achievement feel fulfilling. And loving the journey is what makes us happy. The truth is, I wasn't ever trying to break anyone's record. I was only pushing myself to see how high I could climb while doing what I love. So when you think about walking with the wise, I think, I think, about, walking with, with, I think about walking with people who know these two truths. First, the joy is in the journey, not in the result. And second, you should only compete against yourself, not against anyone else. Watching people who love their work, respect the process, and find joy in the journey is one of the reasons I love covering college basketball as a broadcaster, and I love coaching youth teams. A few weeks ago, I was covering March Madness, and I noticed a certain look in so many of the players' eyes. Some of them knew they were playing in their last game ever. They were playing for the pure joy of it. Years ago, when I coached my sons, Brayton and Davis's teams, I saw the same look. Kids who were living in the now and giving it their all, not in pursuit of any trophy or title, just enjoying the journey of getting better. As I watched them learn what they were capable of, capable of, I learned something too, and it's this lesson. The thing about most achievements is that someone else created them, and someone else is doing the counting. So if you're asking who's the best at this, who's the most successful at that, you also, you also have to ask, who decides what those measures mean? When we define ourselves by someone else's goals, we might miss out on the experiences that matter the most to us as individuals. But when we write our own definition of success and compete against our own limits, we can't lose. We can only grow. What stuck with me most about breaking the scoring record was an experience of getting to the top. It was the experience of going to the top. And the moment I broke it, I started to think about what could I top next? not because I wanted another achievement, but because I needed a new journey. The reality is that anyone can work really hard at something and still not reach the top. You might study really hard, research really hard, practice really hard, and still not be the best, fastest, or greatest. In fact, by definition, only one of us will be the best at something. So my question is, how do you still find the drive to push yourself? How do you still sustain excellence? That's the second trait I found in the people I considered wise. They make sure that the person they're competing against the hardest is themselves. A lot of people are surprised when I tell them that in the NBA, practice was harder than the games. Why? Because it was just about the work, the work, 
the work. There's no score, no fans, no cameras. It was just us versus us. One year in the NBA playoffs, I was matched up against Michael Jordan for an entire series. Sports Illustrated called it my week of hell. But that's not how I felt about it. The only way I could play my best against Michael was not to think of it as competing against him at all. The competition was to see if I could be the best I could be. Every night I walked onto the court and said, today I'm better. And on the nights when Michael got the best of me, I didn't let that change my mind. No matter what, I always said to myself, this is the year, this is the day, this is the game, this is the play, this is the moment. And thanks to that competition with myself, I did have my moments. It's just that Michael had a few more. <laughs> I used Jordan to push me, but I didn't let him define me. You can set high standards and use them to motivate you, motivate you too, but they're only useful if they focus you, not if they distract you. It's good to set goals, but class of 2022, I'm asking you to remember that it's more fulfilling to find purpose in the process and in the process to know that you are your most important competitor. There are a lot of mountaintops you won't reach. You can strive to be selfless, but you can always do more. You can dream of being a perfect person, but you will always find flaws. You can fight for a more equal society, but you will always have more work to do. Perfection isn't a realistic goal, but growth, growth is always a worthy one. Achievements shouldn't be your only measure of success, but fulfillment, fulfillment is undefeated. When you find fulfillment, you're more likely to find wisdom. And in the end, you'll be the kind of person who others want to walk with too. Congratulations, graduates, and go green. Go green. Go green. Thank you.